talk about uh, the third modality in the management of cancer, and actually the chemotherapy making a tremendous improvement in the management of cancer. And uh, there, is, there is a significant survival advantage when we use chemotherapy in many of the tumors. The main aim of using chemotherapy is to kill tumor cells. And as you see that this patient having a very advanced breast cancer, uh, but it is poorly differentiated and rapidly growing. And when the tumor is rapidly growing, it will be a, t a good target for the chemotherapy. So that when we started, we cannot do surgery in this patient because the tumor is uh, quite big and the axillary nodes are quite big, so that we started by chemotherapy first. And this is the picture after a few courses, and this is the picture after eight courses. It means that there is a significant response of the uh, tumor to the uh, chemotherapy. As you know that when the cells are growing, when the cells are in the cycle, it, there will be uh, a good response uh, in the term of using the chemotherapy so that when the tumor is proliferating, we apply chemotherapy, and the tumor vanish or disappear, or reduced in size, this will be a positive effect of the chemotherapy. This is our objective, this is what we need to do. But unfortunately, at the same time, the chemotherapy will affect other growing cells in the body, like the bone marrow, the GI tract, uh, and other rapidly proliferating cells like the bone uh, marrow and this will be knocked by the chemotherapy and this will make a side effect uh, to the chemotherapy so that in one part it works against the tumor but in other part it works in normal growing cells and this is a side effect so that we have to weigh the balance between the complications of the chemotherapy and the advantages of the chemotherapy and for this reason, we talk about a narrow therapeutic index where the toxic dose to the normal tissue is very near or similar to the toxic dose to the tumor, which is a therapeutic dose. So that is one of the major problems of chemotherapy, that it has a narrow therapeutic index. Uh, the mechanism of action, it is quite complicated. But we will talk in a brief about some facts regarding the mechanism of action of chemotherapy. As you know that the chemotherapeutic agents, you remember the cell cycle, and it is composed of phases. Many of, most of the chemotherapy of, uh, working differently in different phases in the cycle. And, and for this reason, when we use more than one chemotherapeutic agent, one working in one phase and the other working in the other phase, uh, probably we will have, we will gain a positive effect from this chemotherapy. For this reason, usually it is advised to uh, use uh, multiple drugs rather than one single drug. Uh, as you know, that the larger tumors are having a small growth fraction, and those tumors usually with big tumor and small growth fraction, so that the growing cells are. Uh, the number or the percentage of the growing cells is small so that the response will be less. Uh, because big tumors usually there is a hypoxic cell. If there is no enough oxygen, there is no enough nutrition going to that area. And those will be in the stage of G0 so that they will not be a good target for the chemotherapy. Uh, for this reason, very, it, we are unfortunate uh, with the patient of the first slide, but usually when we have a big tumor like this, it is unlikely to have the response demonstrated in the slide. So that the smaller the tumor, the larger the effect uh, or the impact of chemotherapy. It, in other ways, the smaller the tumor, the larger the growth fraction in the tumor. And the larger is the tumor, the smaller is the growth, growth fraction. fraction. Uh, uh, how the chemotherapy work in the term of pharmacokinetics. As you know that uh, we have the mechanism of action, we have first order kinetic and we have, uh, so, sorry, we have zero order kinetic 
and we have first order kinetic. Zero order kinetic means that a fixed dose of a drug will kill a fixed number of cells, a fixed portion. Okay? While the uh, first order kinetic, a fixed dose will kill a fixed percentage, not a fixed part or fixed number of cells. It is a fixed percentage of the uh, cells present in that tumor. And we have a, a first logarithm cell kill where the fixed dose kill 90% of the cell population. And we have a second logarithm cell kill where the fixed dose will kill or destroy 99% of the tumor cells population. So that the mechanism of action of chemotherapy, it works as first order kinetic, second logarithm cell kill. Okay? Uh, the chemotherapy, if you just see this slightly complicated slide, we have here the number of cells present in the tumor. You know that when we have number of cells 10 to power uh, 12, it is almost a kilogram of tissue. It is almost a kilogram. And we said uh, before that when we have a tumor 10 to power 9, which needs 30 doubling time to reach this number from one cell, and it, it, it has a one gram of tissue. So that will fall from a uh, few doublings, it will be uh, 12 kilograms. So that if we start, for example, we're using chemotherapy with this bulk of the tumor. Uh, as, as we said that it is the second logarithm, first cell cell, when you start to give the chemotherapy, it will be reduced by uh, two here, so that it will be 10 to power 10, okay? But when we stop the chemotherapy and we will wait for the second dose, there will be a, a growth by one logarithm, okay? So that the end result at one cycle is one logarithm. Probably, probably it is not easy to understand. So that we will hear, we will, if we use chemotherapy, we just, uh, we just say that the remaining part of this is one percent. But it's here 10 to power 10, and it will reach 10 to power 11. When, with the second dose, it reached 10 to power 9. So that from one kilogram, if it's unaffected, it will be a one, uh, one gram of tissue. Before the second or the third course, it will, it will grow again, okay? It will gain one logarithm. So that it will be 10 to power 10. And when we start the, the third or fourth dose here, it will be 10 to power 8. So that when we have it, a 10 to power 8 or 10 to, po 10 to power 9 is a tumor of 1 centimeter in diameter. So that the tumor of 10 to power 8 it, it, it is smaller, so that probably at this stage, when we try to detect where is the tumor, we will not find it. It means that clinically we cannot see the tumor. So that here will raise the dilemma after using this amount of chemotherapy. If we continue, okay, we will have therapeutic advantage. But at the same time, we will have a toxic problem, okay? So that if we just continue using this drug at the end, in theory, we will have a cure. But probably the patient will die from using all of this chemotherapy. And other problem that the cells, they are not homogeneously responding to the chemotherapy. So that the patient will develop other cells resistant to this chemotherapy so that this will bypass the mechanism of action and they will start to grow. So that for this reason, it is quite difficult to rely in solid tumor about the chemotherapy alone. While if we take a small tumor, which is micrometastasis, that we assume that there is a tumor, and probably it is the size of 10 to power 3 or 1,000 cells present in the lung or in the liver, so that when we use the chemotherapy, we will have a rapid effect and with a shorter duration because uh, the, the tumor burden is small. زي ما حكينا إنه لما يكون التومر small, كل the cells, all of the cells are growing, okay, so that they will be hit by the chemotherapy. So that this is the concept 
when we have a problem with a to give the chemotherapy and the patient develop tox and resistance or to stop the, the chemotherapy when we don't see the, the tumor. But in a brief, when you finish the chemotherapy for a bulky disease, it is unlikely that the body is sterilized from the tumor cells. Okay? There will be dormant resistant cells after the effect of chemotherapy, they will appear again. So that the toxic effect of chemotherapy will limit the dose. We cannot escalate. We have a ceiling in the, in the, uh, using the chemotherapy. And cancer cells, as we said, showing resistance with time. A tumor. A new tumor means that the tumor didn't expose to the chemotherapy. At least we will have uh, each 1,000 cell, one cell is resistant to the available chemotherapy. And with the use of chemotherapy, the tumor cells developing a mechanism in order to get rid from the drug effect, either by making efflux, a mechanism which makes efflux of the tumor outside the cell. The, the, the drug, drug. Sorry, the drug will come to the cell and there is an efflux mechanism to send it to the outside the cell. And also there is a, uh, so, so that for this reason, we will have the resistance. And the resistance to the chemotherapy, it is a real challenge and a real problem in using chemotherapy.